Hi friends, we're going to look at Federal List 84 today. This is the second longest Federal List paper. I usually don't wear a cap, but I decided to do this at the beginning of this lecture. This is to uh, appreciate and give my thanks to the University of Oklahoma community, to the library. Uh, I went to school here in 1980s, um, and uh, ever since then, I've lived close by and uh, take advantage of the, the lectures that are given here, the community. I love being around here. It's a very friendly community. It's a beautiful campus, wonderful, wonderful academic standards all the way, all the way through uh, President Boren. The current president has done a lot to... Uh, bring this university and up and make it one of the best uh, public universities in the nation. They've got a wonderful uh, school, uh, OU Institute for uh, the uh, American Constitutional Heritage. Uh, it's directed by a wonderful person. Um, so if you decide to go to school uh, and study the U.S. Constitution, American government, or you just want to go to a great university, OU is the place to go. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm sitting on the third floor of the main library on the main campus. Uh, and I want to say I am really, really uh, feel blessed by the creator of the universe that has given me this opportunity to be able to uh, read these Federalist papers um, and record them. So hopefully one day, uh, any immigrant to the United States who does not speak English as a first language, and that would be majority of you, a vast majority of you, or any English language learner anywhere in the world that wants to understand the federal system of the United States and federalism in general better, this might just give them a little bit of a start. Um, I've tried to include uh, the names of the professors whose lectures you can watch. I've tried to uh, show you some of the best websites to learn about America, um, to learn American history, to learn about American and the religion in America, literature, American civilization as a whole. Uh, I hope they will become useful, helpful one day to you. So uh, let me go ahead and start uh, uh, just telling you a little bit about Federalist 84 uh, in general. Uh, this is one of the things that all the books that I've shown you, um, these are major scholars. Um, they don't really talk about this. Um, by the time Hamilton, for example, had got to writing papers 78 through 85. He's pretty tired. I mean, he's been going at it for over a year. He's been defending the fact that we need a central government that works, energetic, can take care of business. And uh, he was instrumental in making the federal uh, convention happened. Him and Madison were totally behind it. They were the force behind it. And fortunately, George Washington and then Benjamin Fran Franklin uh, became a good part of this convention. Otherwise, this would not have happened. We would not have had a uh, constitution in this format had Washington not agreed to attend, had Franklin not agreed to attend. Now, he was old, he was sick, but he, just because of his importance, especially overseas, it was very instrumental that he, these people were there. And they actually kind of calmed Hamilton down, because when you look at some of his talks and lectures, his speeches on the floor of the convention, he was, he was a big fan of something close to a monarchy. So they tampered him down. They said, Slow down, son, slow down. 
that's not going to sell in the United States. It's what's going to be the United States after this revolution that we just had. We just got rid of a king, and you're pretty much saying, let's choose a president for life. Let's elect senators for life. I say, that's not going to happen. So he actually decided, okay, I just want to have, I want to be a state maker. I want my name to be remembered. Him, Madison, Jefferson, John Adams, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, these big names, Wilson, um, and some of these other influential people in the convention, and then afterwards. So remember, Hamilton is tired. Remember, he knows he's not very well liked by a lot of people because they know his tendency, of his monarchical tendencies. He doesn't come from a good background. Um, they make fun of him and, you know, write in the letters that they would write. They would call him a, uh, a bastard because his dad had walked out on the, out on the family at a very early childhood. And he wanted to uh, be famous, not in the sense that we have today, like a book I showed you. Uh, fame and the founding fathers. He wanted to be remembered for generations to come. So he's tired. And one of the things that he even says in this Federalist 84, that we don't even need it, it's pretty silly. I mean, he says, we've got all these things, provisions in the Constitution. Who needs a Bill of Rights? But fortunately, anti-Federalists persisted, and we got what is the first 10 amendments of the United States, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Otherwise, this Constitution, as great as it is, it wouldn't be worth anything. Constitution without the Bill of Rights, without the 14th Amendment, without the 19th Amendment, without a couple other amendments, really doesn't mean anything. It's just a piece of paper. If, if you didn't have those Bill of Rights, it's a, it's a wonderful document, I've always said, Article 6, that says there should be no religious test. That's one of the most wonderful aspects of the body of this Constitution. But if you did not have the Bill of Rights, then it really wouldn't matter whether that article said there will be no religious tests or not. So, so remember, he's tired, he's been attacked, he's trying to bring this thing to an end. So some of these things that he says to us would probably be like, what is he talking about? Not having a Bill of Rights is okay, but uh, he deserves a lot of honor because he did a lot. Um, I was very fortunate to, in the middle of 1980s, uh, when I got deported, early 80s actually, 1980, I got deported because of the hostage crisis and because I sent my visa to be renewed and uh, um, don't want to go in detail, but I, it just shocked me and I started asking questions. Wh why did this happen? And gradually I got to a point where I wanted to learn about American history, American government. And gradually, I started reading the founders. I just went to their writings first. It's the first thing I did. And then gradually, I came to uh, start reading the Federalist Papers and then learning more about uh, the American government. So that's pretty much what I've been trying to share with you um, in these last 300 plus videos. So let me at least read a paragraph here, since this is supposed to be a reading of Federalist 84. Uh, in the course of the foregoing review of the Constitution, I have taken notice of and endeavored to answer most of the objections which have appeared against it. There, however, remain a few which either did not fall naturally under any particular head, we couldn't categorize it, or were forgotten in their proper places. We just overlooked them. These shall not be discussed, but as the subject has been drawn into great length, 
I shall so far consult brevity as to comprise all my observations on these miscellaneous points in a single paper. It's miscellaneous various points in this paper. He even, he even himself gives a hint that he's just tired. He says, as the subject has been drawn into great length, we've been going at this for a long time, we've been um, explaining things to you in these past 83 Federalist Papers, so we're going to do this one, just cover the things that we've missed, uh, or cover the things that were not put in the right category, and then uh, we'll bring this to, the, to an end in the next Federalist Papers. So uh, uh, just uh, hang in there a little bit longer. Uh, we'll go through this. Uh, we'll just make a few comments about what Hamilton is trying to say here. Um, and uh, I uh, just wanted to share with you that it has been a great blessing to be able to do this um, as a non-native. Um, it's uh, just it's a wonderful feeling. This is the greatest country in the world. But remember, people that live in this country have the greatest responsibility. I don't think we are living up to it. So I don't want to, so it's, it's you immigrants and uh, you younger Americans um, that can change this country, can change the direction of this country and keep it as great as it is. It's a blessed country. We're lucky to have had good people at the right time making the right decisions. But right now, we're going the wrong direction. So I'll uh, see you in part two of Federalist 84.